On behalf of all of us, my name is Beasley Saint. So long and good evening. Hey, right now, Brendan Parker, Matt Staten are standing by with tonight's Ram Post Game Show, brought to you by your Alberta Ram dealers. truck of the year three times in a row that had never been done before then again neither had a 12 inch touchscreen or a thousand pound feet of torque never been done before it's just kind of our thing Welcome inside Flames Post Game Live. It's brought to you by your Alberta Ram dealers. The Calgary Flames, with a come from behind victory in game number five, have taken a 3 2 series lead. Brendan Parker alongside Matt Stage in here. And um, it, boy, it was one of those games where, again, it's 1 uh, nothing going into the third period. How did the uh, Flames find a way to finally get to Jake Ottinger there in the third tonight? Yeah, they just get pucks at the net. Um, you know, you, you, you keep going there and, and fight for the positioning, and eventually Dallas got caught maybe puck watching a bit and um, backs got inside a position there and managed made a great play uh, for a deflection and, and after that you, you saw the momentum change the, the building became alive and uh, it wasn't too long after that where they counter with it with the go-ahead goal which was uh, uh, vintage uh, Andrew Man Mangiapane that we yeah. saw all season long and uh, it's nice to see him get rewarded because uh, you know it has been the easiest series up to that point and uh, he had a huge third period for the hockey club as did Michael Backlund. Yeah he sets up the Backlund goal and then obviously 35 goals in the regular season for Andrew Mangiapane you said vintage match and uh, boy coming off the rush like that yeah. you could almost see the confidence kind of brimming as he crossed the blue line there. Yeah and, and we were talking about it like how many goals have beat Ottinger clean like that this series it hasn't yeah. been many um, especially off the rush and a big moment like that that's uh it's a great shot and, and a huge goal you know that that gives you a a lead in the series going back to dallas here in game six yeah and tyler talked about it uh in terms of the confidence our last question in the second intermission and, and you said you're one shot away and that's not something you can lose sight of on on but you know and and right before we went back to the third period you know you you mentioned it and it's just you know some of the confidence the poise having veterans in that locker room and just not getting away from what they've been doing yeah, you, you just stick with it. Um, you, you don't want to change your game. Both teams have had success to this point, and um, you're not going to change what's worked for you all year. And, and for Calgary, they've been right there. You know, they didn't give up much tonight when they did. Uh, you know, Markey was there to make a big save. And, yeah, you find yourself down by a goal after two, and it – you know, it's a little unsettling for, for fans and everybody watching, but, uh, you know, in the dressing room, you, you believe in what you've worked on all year and stick to it and eventually get rewarded. And, uh, you know, that's all you needed tonight. You, you need that, that big flurry of goals there, and um, the crowd gets into it, and, um, you know, you lock it down. There wasn't much after that that the Flames really had to, um, you know, there's one big save at the end, but Dallas didn't really have anything after that. Yeah, and the uh, and the penalty kill, obviously, uh, which they don't even get a shot on, as far as uh, as far as I could tell, anyway, not not one registered. Uh, before we get to those and some of the late looks and some of uh, the opportunities that Dallas might have had, it looks wise. Let's go how this game unfolds in terms of the offense and go all the way back to uh, the second period because that's where we broke the goose eggs. And it's been that kind of series. It's been a lot of scoreless firsts, and a lot of times that first goal has been huge and a difference maker. Tonight it's Jason Robertson getting his first of this series. Yeah, and it's just a little bit of a breakdown where two Dallas players get in behind on a two-on-one, and um, you know they throw the puck on net. Marky makes the save, but uh, a bad bounce there off Hannafin, uh, you know, gives them the lead. But um, yeah, that, that's been the series. Your, your chances are are hard to come by, and um, and then here in the third we see the Flames get their first goal there and uh, you know great play you could see Dallas kind of standing looking around losing coverage and Bax gets on the inside a great drive by Coleman and, and Mange does the right thing finds Bax and you know that, that just lit the, the whole building on fire it was it was loud in here after that one yeah it did the roof was uh, almost off as it uh, goes and ties this hockey game up and then you can kind of sense it and this line goes right back to work and here's the one that you talked about right off the top of the show and it's Andrew Montepani feeling it coming across the blue line and just unloads that one. Yeah, and it's a great play by Bax in neutral zone, slowing the play down um, and then hitting Manch coming through with speed, you know, and it gives him some space there. And yeah, you don't see that too often in this series where, where he comes down the pipe and, and can let one rip from the slot. And Manch does that far down. I don't think you could, you know, you could see the confidence just build after he got that assist early in the period. So 
Um, it, it was a huge five minute span there for the team and, and then it leads to uh, Lewis's um, empty netter which seals the deal. So a uh, big character win. Doesn't matter how um, you showed up for that third period and, and made it count and now you find yourself in a good spot going back to Dallas. Yeah, and it's, you know, Trevor Lewis took a couple of big shots in this game, obviously plays a pivotal role. Uh, he's in on that penalty kill to help uh, kill it off in the third period and then scores the big empty net goal. I mean, just as a player, when you feel the building turn like that, I mean, what's you've been part of those games. I mean, what's it like when you're on the bench and you just get that wave of momentum and, and, and just energized? It, it, it gives you a boost. It's it's a weird feeling. Like you yeah. feel it as a fan when the team scores, but as a player, it gives you that, that boost. And, and we've seen it across the playoffs. If you just look at the game fives, the home team in the third period has gotten a boost from, you know, whether something's happened in the game and the crowd gets behind them and, and they've been able to, you know, overcome, you know, being yeah. behind in the third period. You saw it in Edmonton uh, and you saw it in Toronto and Florida today, same thing. So teams definitely uh, use that, that home building momentum to their advantage. Um, and, and all it takes is a break or, you know, a big goal, a, a big penalty kill, a big save, and, and you feel it. So um, it was nice to see you here in the Saddle Dome, and um, especially after game two here, it, it was nice to see them uh, come out in that third period and, and pot three. And we saw it too, the uh, red light, uh, if you're watching out there, uh, it, it looks just the same. The energy out there, uh, great to see the sea of red. Uh, playing a big role in this hockey game inside and out. Uh, before we get to uh, some post-game reaction, we'll hear from Daryl Sutter. We'll hear from a couple of players. Assume Sue Michael Backlund, Andrew Mangiapane will be among those. Let's get to that penalty kill. And obviously a crucial spot in this hockey game. Uh, you've just kind of take, taken over the momentum. You've taken over the lead. Um, this has been a really good penalty kill team all season. What did they do so well here to get this done? Well, they... they didn't give up anything. Um, you know, they took the blue line away. They were on loose pucks, uh, you know, and it starts with, with an opening face-off. You know, you win that first face-off and clear it all the way down. Well, it doesn't get out actually, but, um, you know, eventually. You, eventually gets out pretty early in the, in the penalty kill and uh, you kill off a bunch of seconds. And, you know, Dallas never really got settled into positioning on this penalty kill. The Flames, you know, confronted them on, on their break-ins and when they were in the zone, they had no time and space. and. Uh, the Flames made sure they got the puck down and out every chance they had, and um, that was huge, you know, because, you know, that, that at that point in the game, you take a penalty, you know, uh, I felt for Shillington in the box. That's that's an unsettling sure. feeling, but when you see your penalty killers go out there and, um, you know, put a performance like that, I don't even think they gave up a shot on that whole penalty kill. Um, that's huge for your team. Well, and, and we always hear so much about being connected, whether it's five on five or in a penalty kill situation, but when you're an aggressive PK like they are, um, you know, that's really kind of where that pays off, right? I mean, if you get a guy that's pressuring in spots and just the support all over the ice, you know, but particularly on the penalty kill. Yeah, it's it's no different than five on five. You got to be connected and, and, you know, on the penalty kill when you want to be aggressive. Yeah, you got to have the support. You got to yeah. trust each other, really. Um, you know, being connected is trusting all four guys on the ice and, and right. um, Markstrom's probably back there shouting, at, you know, what's going on in front of them and, and giving guys a little bit of a heads up, but it's just, you're in sync. You, you work all year to, to find that chemistry um, for times like that. And yeah. they executed perfectly and um, didn't give J Dallas a sniff. Five shots is all uh, Dallas was able to muster in the third period, but uh, you mentioned Markstrom and kind of, you know, you know, getting rid of sorry, get him out some uh, directions, but just the save in the third too is. Sometimes it's not about how many; it's about uh, when you get them, and that was a big one tonight in the third. Yeah, he's he's been quiet. Like we're talking about Andre a lot, but Markstrom's sure. been unbelievable all series. He's he's you know he doesn't give up anything, and when, and when there is a chance against, he's there to make the save. Um, even the goal he led up today was, was a bad balance off sure. a rebound, but yeah, Good save first, though, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But late in the game. Um, you know, you didn't give up many shots, but look who's in front, Pavelski, the, the one guy you probably don't want in front in the series. Right. Um, and he makes a huge save. That's a 10 baller. You see the desperation for all the guys, but huge save by Markstrom, keeps it tied, or keeps keeps the one goal lead, doesn't let it get tied. And um, that's that's hockey. That's, uh, that's, what you, that's what you want from your goalie. And, and that's what he brings back there, that calmness. You know he's going to make that save when you need it. And, um, yeah, I don't think you'd, you'd want any other guy back there in this whole league. He's, uh, he's one of the best ones for sure. It's been fun to watch. I mean, and, and I know that from the outside, there's been a lot of, you know, boring talk when they talk about this series. But, you know, I think both coaches have pointed it out. Um, 
when you get good goaltending, it means there's there are scoring chances that are in there somewhere. But it, it's it's both guys have been really good all series. Oh, they have been, and you could say that's the story of the series. Yeah. Um, you know, but both teams play a solid foundation um, defensive game, um, but they both have a lot of skill and yeah. um, but they both have skilled goaltenders so <laughs> it's uh, if you're watching the series like we are you know it's been entertaining um, yeah. it's been tight it's been nerve-wracking um, it's been exciting and um, you know it's just whatever you appreciate if you want the end-to-end -end stuff um, go watch one of the other series <laughs> yeah. but uh, I don't yeah. think that's going to work if you want to go on a long run so I think sure. this this is a very fitting series for for the Flames and hopefully going forward. Uh, you get that way because you got a couple of experienced coaches as well, and uh, Daryl Sutter is one of those. Here's the uh, head coach of the Calgary Flames now, his reaction post game. Go ahead, you guys. Daryl, your thoughts on that one? Close game, every game. Tied half. Every game is either tied or close in third period, so no different than any other one. Trevor Lewis said that Monday was the, he felt the most complete effort from this team. Where would you rank this game just in terms of uh, how complete it was? It was a tight checking game. I think Dallas really tightened their game up. And we had some guys that weren't quite ready for that. So we had to do some adjusting moving around. So uh, close games. Mean for Andrew Mangiapane to be the guy to get the assist on that tying goal and then go ahead and get the game winner. Yeah, I think Michael, that line switching them lines around the third period was a good line for us. What, what, what Coleman was obviously heavily involved in that goal. Just what did you think of that? It was heavy into the game. That just shows you those guys that have, with pedigree that have been there, been there, done that. Was there anything that? changed in the game in the third period when you guys scored those goals or was it just capitalizing? No, I don't think so. I think teams are close the way they play. They don't give, they don't give up much. We don't give up much. So it comes down to maybe an extra effort somewhere. What gets said in the intermission between the second and third period that makes a team come out the lead? That wouldn't be something that has to be talked about. What went into the decision to move Matthew Kachak away from the traditional? Line had no pace. You know, they were playing a way tighter game, and line had no pace. See anything different out of Andrew Mangiapane kind of throughout the night tonight? No. Nope. a good, hard game. I mean, it's what's expected out of him. It's not what you did, it's what you do. I feel like it's a matter of time for Tyler to pull in. You, you talked about this before, but he's been in and around it just. Yeah, it's not just about scoring. There's a lot more in the game than that. Otherwise, we'd just play all them guys that scored lots of goals during the year, lots. <laughs> what did you see out of Backlund tonight? Pardon? What did you see out of Michael Backlund? The line was really good in the third period. In those tight checking games, I mean, it's obviously a skill. Plus penalty kill, right? Sorry. It's obviously a skill in the tight checking game where you're down to have that patience and keep working at it. Um, have you been pleased with, with the way tonight your team just kept at it? Yeah, that's how the whole series has been. Been again tonight's an empty net goal. How many has there been? This tells you how close it is. Daryl, in a series that's been so tight, how significant is it to be the team that's going to get two cracks at finishing it off? Well, game three is a lot tougher than winning game two, and a lot of our players have never won a game three, so game four will be a lot tougher than winning game three or win. In those first two periods, were you happy with the team's effort? Yeah. It's a tight checking game. Good. All right. All right, there's some uh, thoughts post game from head coach Joe Sutter. Uh, pretty much a theme that's run through every post game, and that's tight, close. Uh, hard, I mean, really, not much else to say. I mean, you just got to find ways to win these games, right? It's. Yeah, that, that's what it was. You know, he, he, he just basically says as bluntly as, you know, it probably needs to be said, but it's tight checking. And, and yeah. even the Flames, you know, tying goal, like you caught Dallas sleeping there, puck watching for a split second. Right. You know, it was a you know, three second or two second span there. They're all puck watching. And um, you get to the inside and have, man, like when else has Mange had or anybody have that, that space, much time yeah. to make a play there um, all series? And, and, you know, that play there that he did have that time they took advantage and um that rallied them to 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 get going in this game and and find some offense 
Well, we're going to hear from him in, in just a second. Obviously, he's a big part of what you were just describing there. But Michael Backlund and, and maybe just what that does for a guy that uh, obviously is a huge role in this team playing the middle ice. But, you know, you can see kind of, again, we talk about confidence and it kind of it, it spurned the, that line. He, as Daryl said, it's been it was good for him in the third period. But what can that do for Michael and the rest of this group when he's going like that? Oh, it's huge. It, it just brings that, you know, secondary, you know, attack that, that the Flames have had all year. Um, you know, so, you know, the okay. top line, you know what you're going to get from them. But um, when you have another line going like Bax and Mange and, and Coleman were going there in the third period, you know, that just brings another threat. And, and all, those three guys all play the right way. Um, that's where it starts. They're hard workers. You know what you're going to get from them. Um, but when you can add the offensive element and, and they're starting to produce like they are, um, yeah, confidence is huge. Um, you know, it's it's a word that some people like, and and it's it's a huge factor for any player because you get that feeling of of contributing, and and it just becomes easier and easier uh, once it happens. Uh, okay, we'll uh, we'll put a wrap on the post game show in just a moment, but uh, but first we'll hear from uh, the two goal scorers tonight and the big ones. It was the game tying goal and the game winning goal. Andrew Mangiapane and Michael Backlund are there. What uh, what's it mean to be getting on a flight tomorrow with a, a chance to close out a series down in down in Dallas? Well, it feels uh, it's gonna feel a lot better than if you were down for sure. Uh, but we know it's gonna be a really hard game. But of course, we feel confident and uh, excited going there. Um, it's a big game, and yeah. Was there a moment in that third period where you felt momentum switch before you scored that goal? Was there something that changed there? It was such a tight game for you guys. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think uh, it's tight, tight hockey game. It's a tight series. Uh, we just got to stick to, stick to our game, right, and uh, not deviate. Uh, stay patient with it, and stick to our system, and you know, keep grinding them down, and uh, eventually paid off in the third. And there was the emotion that hits you when your shot hits the back of the net and puts your team up two-one. Yeah, it was, uh, it was big. I was uh, obviously, I think, a little happy there, um, <laughs> but uh, I think. Uh, Job's not done, obviously, and uh, we got to prepare uh, now for next game. How about you, Michael? When when you scored, there's been some relief, elation. How would you describe it? Yeah, I felt great. Uh, it's always a great feeling scoring at home, but especially in the playoffs, uh, there nothing better uh, except winning, of course. But uh, yeah, no, I haven't scored much down the stretch here, so uh, felt really good to. Uh, the puck in the net and such a big goal as well. Can you just talk about the third period in general? I mean, you outshot them by a huge margin, and even though you might not have seen anything leading up to the goal, shots were 13 to two in that point in the period. Yeah, I think um, it wasn't our best second period. Um, not even close. We knew we can, uh, we had to be better coming in the third, and you know we talked about it in the dressing room, and we had to come out and you know first shift match. Um, good look, maybe not the best pass, but you know almost. So a scoring chance right at first shift, and I think that creates some energy for the group, uh, having a good first shift, and now we got rolling. Michael, you got you got the goal, Andrew. You got the assist. Blake Coleman though had a lot to do with that opening goal. Just uh, what I guess, just what what are your thoughts on sort of what he contributed on that goal? Yeah, it was a good play by him. Um, came through the neutral zone with uh, a lot of speed, um, and backed off their D and went went to the net, and you know the rebound was there. And, uh, I picked it up and. Made it uh, past the back. So, but yeah, it was a good play by Colsey. Um, coming through the neutral zone with speed, uh, we're going to need more of that. What was it that Dallas was able to do through 40 minutes to stifle you guys so much? I think it was lots on us, too. We weren't we weren't close to our best. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know why, but yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, they play they play a tight game. They've, it's been a tight series the whole five games. Um, if we're not at our, our best, we're not going to create. We're at, and play in the ozone and uh, be the better team. So uh, they have a really good team. So that's uh, that's just the thing. If we're not on our toes and not playing the best way we can, it's it's going to be in their favor. Is it concerning that you guys weren't at your best through 40 minutes in, in an important game like this, or relieving that you can turn it on and, and, and find it? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, both ways. Um, it's not good enough um, the way you play in the second. Um, so, but a uh, great response in the third. Um, so yeah, both ways said during the second intermission you just mentioned it a little bit what was said that sort of was the catalyst for this the third period you had well I think everyone or a lot of guys stepped up and talked in the room and the message was just clear we will put the period behind us and go out and play our game 
uh, play the way we can, believe, um, yeah, just get back to our game um, and, uh, that you know, check for our chances. That's when we're our best, and that's what we did in the third. Michael, kind of following up on that, Michael, when everyone's, like, kind of saying their piece, are you guys looking for some clarity, like, just to kind of get through the hurricane of playoffs, or are you looking for someone to rally the troops and fire everyone up? Um, I think it was, um, you know, um, so far it's been a team effort. Uh, in the room, a lot of guys are stepping up and um, making the voice heard and pushing guys, and uh, uh, that's what we've done all year. Uh, hasn't been one guy. It's been uh, a lot of guys in the room, so I think that's a big key or big uh, factor to our success. Michael, can you describe the way that you're seeing the puck when you're on the penalty kill? It seems like you have a lot of shorthanded opportunities when you're – uh, I'm just trying to uh, anticipate the next play, um, and um, yeah, I <clears throat> trying to have a good stick and be in the lanes, and you know when the when there's room um, and time for it. Uh, you know you gotta know the clock in the in game, and but when there's time for it, you can go for it for sure. Talked about Blake and his impact on that goal already, but are we kind of seeing like what that Stanley Cup pedigree that gets talked about a lot in the way that he played tonight and, and in this past season? Yeah, Colsey's a great player, right? So um, he makes plays, um, kills plays, and you know we're going to need uh, more from more from him down the stretch there. Andrew, I don't think you had a point in this series. You didn't play a whole ton in Game Five, like did. You do you have anything on your mind personally to do differently or, or do better tonight? No, just go out there and play my game, right, and play with confidence. Uh, and that's, you know, I just wanted to go out there and just help the team win. Yeah, I know you already said you were pretty happy, but can you try and describe, like, what this building was like when when you scored that goal? Yeah, it was, um, over there. Yeah, it was loud. It was excited, right, and uh, it was great. Even when back scored, right, you just uh, – yeah, I hear the building e erupt, right? I think um, you know the fans are waiting for for a goal, and it was a big goal that uh, back scored there, and just uh, it kind of blew up. And then when I think uh, just I think our whole team just fed off that energy from from the fans there. Michael, when you scored that goal, could you hear anything? Yeah, it was loud, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was screaming probably too. You know, I was screaming my emotions too, and I don't think anyone heard me, but. <laughs> Uh, but it's also great to see all the fans outside the ring too, uh, sharing us on. Uh, that's awesome. The the red lot, I think they call it. Nah, it's great. Uh, see so many people showing up and uh, gives you a buzz too when you look up the screen and see all the fans out there. For uh, for whichever one of you wants to answer this, what is going to be the key to closing this out in Game Six? Sorry. What's going to be key to getting the fourth one? <clears throat> Again, uh, building off that third period and just playing our game, play with confidence and not deviate from our, our system. Uh, we're a good team when all four lines are going, uh, all three pairs. And, you know, we just got to keep, um, you know, wearing them down and playing our game. Can you just speak to how little momentum seems to matter, not just in this series, but all the series. You look around the league and you guys were dominant last game. Those two periods, they were... Just the momentum not being that much of a factor. Yeah, I think there's a lot of up and downs throughout uh, the series, right? and that's why playoff hockey is uh, great, right? Uh, you never know um, when the momentum's going to kind of turn, and you know you can't get too high, can't get too low, obviously, but um, you know you just got to sometimes weather the storm and then you know put pressure when uh, you guys are feeling good, right? Okay, wrap it up there. Flames Love and Media Bill at 9:45 a.m. We call it the Ram 1500 Limited. But truth be told, there's nothing limited about it. Ram 1500, winner, JD Power Award for Best Driver Appeal. All right, Flames Post Game Live brought to you by your Alberta Ram dealers, Brendan Parker, alongside Matt Stajan. It is a 3 1 come from behind victory for the Calgary Flames, and now in a position to take this back to Dallas with an opportunity to close out this first round series. You heard Dal uh, D you heard Daryl Sutter talk about, uh, you know, a big third win in this series, and that can be a hurdle. Um, everyone always says the uh, cliche is that the fourth one is the hardest. Uh, what is the task of trying to close out a series in the National Hockey League? Well, they, they got to go into Dallas and play 
that game like they played game four really yeah um, but it's just having that killer instinct you know you're it's right there um but you're gonna have a desperate team you're playing the team you're trying to you know take out they're gonna be as desperate as you're, you're ever gonna see anybody so yeah. that's the challenge um know that they're coming at you um if you take your foot off the gas at all um you'll, you'll find yourself chasing a hockey game and um you know put yourself in a position where you might have to come back home uh, to play game seven so yeah. the the mentality is just to go after it and i think uh the flames did that in uh in game four um you know they they uh did what they needed to do today on home ice with a big third period and and now you you try and finish it off in, in game six and not leave it to chance uh, yeah. by going to a game seven well in 2015 that was the situation with you guys right here on home ice game six and you didn't want to have to you know leave it to chance on the road in game seven exactly and 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 i remember we, we lost game five and we we're up three one in that series and we lost game five in vancouver right um with a really good goaltending performance we lost so coming back home it was it felt like a must win so uh yeah i think you, you don't want to find yourself down three nothing like we were in that game but we, we always uh, have this goal queued oh. up though right <laughs> here it's go. always ready well let's let's hope that the we get lots of moments like this here with uh yeah series clinching goals to to show here um this spring because uh it, it's a good feeling for for everybody and then the fans deserve it here so um let, let's see we let's hope we get lots of those moments that was one of those uh, that same thing though i remember being in that building that night too it's it just like it feels like the top's popping off right i mean it, it's it's a big moment right? yeah and that's what this building is it's yeah. you, you feel it in there it's sure. uh it's it's an older barn and for sure but uh you know there's something about it and it gets really loud. Um, yeah. If you haven't been in here, it gets as loud as, as any rink in the league. Yeah, well said. Uh, good memories there, and uh, obviously a good opportunity for the Calgary Flames upcoming. 3-2 uh, series lead now on to Dallas, where they will have an opportunity to close out this best-of-seven first-round series on Friday night back in Dallas. As for tonight, three goals in the third period. It started with Michael Backlund, Andrew Mangiapane, and then Trevor Lewis into the empty net, and that's how you get the final score tonight, 3-1. Uh, Two straight wins for the Calgary Flames, one on the road, one at home, and now game six Friday night from American Airlines Center in Dallas and an opportunity to close out this series. Thanks for watching Flames Post Game Live, brought to you by your Alberta Ram dealers. For Matt Stage and myself and all of us at Flames TV, we'll see you when we see you next back at the Scotiabank Settlement.